In this video, I'm going to show you how to answer some of the common types of questions that you'll see inside Quest. And one of the problems with uh, any online program is that you're trying to tell the computer what, what you're doing and what you mean. And, you know, computers are dumb sometimes. They, you think that they interpret one way and they interpret a different way. So this is some of the common question types that you'll see in Quest and how to answer them. So the first question that you'll come across is uh, potentially is a short answer type question. This is different than a numerical question. This is a, a short answer. And what you want to do on these questions, is, these questions are mainly used for like vocabulary type questions. And when you enter the answer in, you have to make sure that your answer is the same as is the correct one. Spelling matters, extra spaces matter. You want to be careful to make sure that you do everything right. It's matching each letter one after another to make sure things are correct. And you'll see that one of the answers for this question is set to be answer space one. Well, I'm putting answer without the space in there, and I'm going to try to submit this. And you'll notice that that's not the right answer because it wasn't coded exactly the same. So if I do answer with the space in there, then it will be marked as correct. And this problem does, uh, doesn't matter if you do uppercase or lowercase. That's one thing that doesn't matter. But spelling, spelling needs to be correct. Um, make sure that you read the question to make sure you answer it in the right form. Sometimes they'll give you some extra hints on how to format your question. Second question we're going to cover is actually probably the most common question that you'll see aside from multiple choice in Quest, and that's a numerical question. And with these questions, they allow you to put in some form of number. And a lot of times with a the number, there's a unit that's associated with it, and it'll tell you in the question what unit you need to respond in. So if they say you need to be you need your answer in kilograms and you put it in grams, even if your answer is mathematically the same, so if it was one kilogram and you put in a thousand grams, those are the same value. You have to answer in terms of what the question is. So this question doesn't specify what the units are, but it does specify that you have to be plus or minus one to get it right. So a lot of times these questions, these numerical questions, will allow you for some small range where your answer is correct. And that is for rounding errors that might come up, or if you do something just a little bit different than how the computer does it. So in this answer, um, I need to be, the correct answer is 1,000, and I have to be within one unit of that 1,000. So if I do 1,002, that's outside of the range, and it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and try 1001 and see what this does. And it says that it's correct because I'm within the 1001. I should mention that you got to be careful with including this number. Sometimes it doesn't like it with when you're exactly at plus or minus that number. So you want to try to solve your question as accurately as possible. Um, I know that Quest will, in almost all the questions, will calculate the numbers at the very end. So if you have the choice of sol solving the problem algebraically, and then at the end putting in the numbers, do it that way. That's the most accurate way. Quest also keeps track of uh, six digits when it does its rounding. So if you're without, if you're not within that uh, six-digit accuracy, um, or if you're keeping track of only maybe one or two significant figures, you may be outside of this answer. Finally, unless the question states specifically, significant figures are not obeyed in Quest. Computer does not go ahead and recognize significant figures unless it was explicitly stated in the problem. So just be careful of that. Um, sometimes people get marked wrong because their answer is not accurate enough. They claim significant figures, but that's not how Quest will, will answer your questions. 
Finally, there's a third type of question that has this answer box in it, and this is what we call an algebraic free response. And most of these questions will say that you have to be exactly in the right answer or you have to be within 0%. So for instance, it's asking, you know, what is the answer to this question? The answer, you know, it maybe had some algebra and we needed to combine two equations or multiply two polynomials, binomials together, together to get the answer. Let's say my answer is actually x squared plus 2x plus 1. I don't know what x is, it's some algebraic question. But quest, you can put in algebraic um, steps on here, and I forgot that I didn't want to click the back button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put in this answer here. I know that x squared plus 2x plus 1 is the same as x plus 1 quantity squared. So I'm going to actually do 1 plus x. So I'm putting everything in parentheses, and now I'm going to raise it to the power. And I could use this little button here to help me out um, with some of these. But I know that in Quest, the caret is how I raise things to a power. I could have done x plus 1 times the quantity 1 plus x. All of these answers are fine. I'm going to do this one, and it's going to submit the answer and say that I was correct. So Quest went through, and it looked mathematically, is this, equ this answer equivalent to the answer that's coded in? And it was, so I got credit for it. If you come up, uh, there are some other algebraic free response questions that have you, that say, maybe factor this binomial, and you'll get two different answers. Most of the time, it'll say some instruction over here to say something like, type in your answer separated by commas. So make sure you're careful of the formatting for these. Commas are our way of separating out separate answers. On the numerical thing, something I should have mentioned is that numerical problems, you need to remove the commas from it. Because commas separate out answers, Quest does not interpret 1, 000, 000 as 1,000. It interprets it as 1, comma, a second answer of 0. So make sure that you're reading the instructions. Be careful how you're putting things in. Watch your rounding. If an answer like this one asks for an algebraic expression, make sure you put the algebraic expression in the right way. It's common um, to not include the, say, y equals part in these types of questions. So really, the thing that I can I tell you to watch out for is watch your answers, watch how you put them in, and read the instructions for the question. A lot of times, they'll give you extra information. Now on this page where you find in this video, uh, you can probably find some additional hints and stuff on it. For instance, units on numerical questions. Um, if you put them in or don't put them in, it's not, uh, it doesn't matter because the question wants you to put it in a specific unit, so it's assumed that you have the right unit. And there's some other things. So uh, hopefully this helped give you some explanation, showed you a little bit of what the style looks like. And hopefully you learn some stuff. So if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us. And thank you for watching this video.